Hello there, we are your hosts Vivek and Pavitra from the Agile Coach Podcast. In this podcast, we bring fresh perspectives to you through our interviews with thought leaders in Agile Coaching, Facilitation, Business Analysis, and Product Management roles. Enjoy! Hello everybody, today we have Priyanka Gewali in our podcast. Um, Priyanka and I connected in LinkedIn a few years ago. And uh, just to kind of give her background, Priyanka is a CTO at a company called Belong Technology. It's an Australian company. She's also um, CTO for another startup called Meet Magic. Uh, has about seven years of experience in tech. Started as a software engineer um, and is mentor for several different organizations like uh, Mentor, Cruise, and a woman's um, entity that helps uh, women get into tech. Uh, so very active uh, in the mentoring community, also has a YouTube channel uh, and has done some amazing things in tech. So we are really excited to talk to Priyanka about her experience, about her take in building products. Uh, with that, welcome Priyanka. Thank you, Vivek, for a really nice intro. I'm glad to be part of this podcast like it's been almost two years we initially chatted and I don't know like what happened in between two years COVID and all of the other things but glad we could make it today yeah yeah definitely I was gonna say you didn't respond but that would yeah I think <laughs> I, I think something happened I think <laughs> something happened in LinkedIn uh yeah so yeah no I'm really glad you're here so Prinka let's let's start with your story like how what where are you from? Like, how did you get into yeah. tech? Tell us um, what you study. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm currently um, based in Sydney, Australia, but I'm originally from Nepal. I grew up there. I did my bachelor's there just for my master's. I came here and mm. then like the rest is history. Now I'm settling well here and enjoying the Aussie life. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's let's start with uh, your education back in Nepal. Like, give us yeah. like, what did you want to do? Did you always want to be a software engineer? Uh, how did you start? No. no, like back in Nepal, when I was um, doing my plus two, I had that mindset that, you know, I'll go into architect, become an uh, architect after some years. I didn't plan to do IT uh, for my bachelor's because like in our family as well, either doctor, engineer, you know, that was the trend. And yeah. uh, just saying that, you know, I'm uh, getting a degree uh, in IT, but that doesn't mean that I'll have ER in front of my name and I, all my relatives are like, really? <laughs> what is this new degree that you're on to you know initially um when i started like that was the phase and yeah and like i could have chosen computer engineering but then there was this new course called bsccsit so bachelor's in computer science and it and that didn't uh like gave the uh, privilege of adding er wow. in front of your name but then yeah. comparing the courses it was really interesting Mm. So that's how, like, I stepped into um, the IT life. Yeah. And um, once I started my bachelor's, uh, within the first year, I started exploring coding, um, mm. programming, learning different languages. Um, but it all really triggered after I joined a boot camp. So that's how I can relate to you and uh, what you do as well. Mm -hmm. And what's your focus? Because um, like my career and journey, it um, it kind of speeded up uh, once I joined the boot camp. That is uh, what I call, uh, like I mentioned to you earlier, women leaders in technology. So mm -hmm. it's a uh, um, company based in Nepal who help uh, like young women get into tech who are kind of skeptical if they should join or not so they provide um six months or a year of boot camp so um when i joined there were like other 14 girls and that's mm. how we started our career um that's how i got into mobile app development first like initially um mm. i used to do android app development and uh, once the boot camp completed then like all the experience that we had, uh, 
like um, if I were part of a corporate business, then I would just learn how to do programming, right? But through the yeah. boot camp, I learned how to pitch, how to network with people and mm. why are these things important. So, you know, there's so much to learn from there. It's not just about learning a language, but it's about actually from there, I got interested into startups and now like I'm working at startups and I enjoy yeah. helping startups, but it all like grew from that phase. Nice. Yeah. So you, you studied computer science, um, like just yeah. like my parents, my parents also used to say, son, we love you a lot. You can be whatever you want between a doctor and an engineer. Just pick <laughs> one. Uh, yeah. And for me, I actually went to engineering school, but for like, I saw, so there were so many more opportunities, uh, in tech for especially as an international student so uh definitely can relate to your story of going into tech and like having to learn it i also went through a small training program um that prepared me for more of an analyst it analyst role um so you talked about going through an immersive program uh where you learn software development but not only learning software development but also learning the higher context of like how engineering yeah. teams work together, how to build products, how startups yeah. operate, how to pitch yourself. So um, that's great. So what did you, the first role, like did you start working immediately into a startup? No, um, like from the hackathon, I learned like how to build a product and how to pitch and how uh, like, it can be financially sustaining thing as well if you develop thing and if you sell it. So mm -hmm. I started um, investing more of my time with freelancing projects because mm. through freelancing, like uh, I used to do the work, I used to get paid and that's how I sustained mm. myself when I did my bachelor's. Um, so, oh, wow. So that you're, yeah. oh, you, did you work in Upwork and just, um, yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, that I was, have that's one so cool. YouTube video as well in Upwork. Like, uh, we had yes. a, a group of friends uh, working in Upwork, and that's how we started getting projects. But then I didn't start my career uh, in a corporate company, but through like freelancing. And then I got like enough confidence that yes, like I can handle any kind of projects. And yeah, uh, yeah I, I uh, stayed around like five, six months in F1 Soft, a company based in Nepal, like really uh, mm. renowned. I worked there as an iOS dev. So I transitioned my um, journey um, from being an Android developer to iOS developer and that is something that really helped me. So that's why I emphasize upskilling as well. Like mm -hmm. sometimes it happens, like being in the tech industry, you might get started with one language and you, you get too comfortable and you want to stick with that language for like yeah. the next five yeah. years, right? Um, but what intrigued me is um, I was doing Android development, but when I learned about iOS, like I was really fascinated it was really simple to mm -hmm. learn and uh, and i was covering the whole market now previously it were just the android devices now i could build something for rest of the market as well so yeah. i at that time i took some time it wasn't that fun part but then now uh, like it has helped me a lot i took time yeah. to upskill myself and got that um, skill and that is something that helped me to land my first job um, here in Australia. Nice. So, uh, Brig, I would love to hear your experience joining your first like big role, right? Like going into a team um, and like, what was that like for you to join a team of um, software engineers building a, a product? Um, that was also back in Nepal. Uh, I joined okay. um, F One Soft. Uh, I joined in the iOS department. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was it was good fun, um, but after some time, I realized that you know I'm I want to get more creative and not only mm. do the mundane tasks. So that's mm. how I again switched back to freelancing. Oh. So I uh, like uh, did that job, uh, but then I moved back. Yeah to free, freelancing but my experience Just, here in sydney was different when i joined as a software engineer yeah what was that like 
um i think the culture that we have back in nepal and here it's different like there's flexibility there's a lot of um focus mm. on growth and learning which mm. is something i didn't found um back then it was mm. like more task oriented and work focused mm. while here mm. it was uh, for my personal growth as well and working as a team um where we had like qas uh vas and then uh rest team of developers project managers that made mm. me feel like you know it's not just my task to deliver this project like we are a whole bunch of people aiming mm. for one thing so that was yeah. kind of motivating yeah so what was that like uh an agile kanban or scrum teams what what was that make like? yeah usually scrum okay yeah nice Uh, I'm curious what, uh, as a developer, uh, since a lot of our audience, uh, they are in the non-coding side of roles, product managers, product owners, scrum masters, business analysts. Um, I wanted to hear uh, a developer, senior developer, a CTO now. Um, what was your experience working with a good product owner uh, or a product manager? Yeah. Um, honestly like the experience changed just like when i was a developer i used to look from a different perspective uh, mm. to qas or bas but now i look from a different perspective and i manage a team and manage a project um mm. back then uh, but you could always tell the difference between a good uh, project manager or good qa and bad qa right yeah. um so from uh, from my experience it's not just about you know if you are technical or not there are certain roles that doesn't require you to be technical but then it's about how willing are you to understand the product mm. understanding the product doesn't mean that uh, you know you need to understand coding or anything but um sometimes even developers do not understand the product you know mm. they just do what they have to do but then mm. uh, it's the responsibility of people in these kind of roles uh mm. for qa for ba or for project manager to deeply understand the product first and mm-hmm. then they can like whether in their documentation or whatever the work um they mm. deliver mm. that helps the development team immensely so mm. um few of my experience uh in the consulting side as well um in projects where they are like really nice uh, bas really nice project manager then uh, the quality of work that's uh, been delivered it's like really different yeah, because yeah. Uh, um there are so many things that a developer can miss mm. you know and yeah, uh, those things that uh, when it gets picked up by a good uh, bas or qas then uh, mm-hmm. it just helps the team to deliver like um, bug free code or um you know a good quality of product even when they roll out so with the like most of my experience have been with uh, startups and mm-hmm. like you also mentioned with the startups so we deliver quickly and it can be buggy as well but with my experience we have always made sure like the product is um there before we uh, make any release like it's of good quality and mm-hmm. it's not buggy because once you have a good team once you have a good team of devs good team of uh, product owners bas mm-hmm. you know there's there's so much of opportunities to look after those things and yeah. like provide greater care for that yeah yeah since prega since, since you are a cto of an organization and i'm sure in several roles that you've had you've had to hire or interview a ba or a product owner so what are you essentially looking uh in a business analyst or a product owner who is looking to join your team um few of my experience with hiring is if someone have like little bit of technical knowledge you know yeah mm. i've back in this year i did html css then um, that also feels like a bonus point mm. but then uh if someone who has really no idea about coding but then um mm. more into the product like who understand different technologies um mm-hmm. like that's all always a good thing to uh, have in you right yeah um, yeah let's say like chat gpt is something you don't need to understand programming but you can still have that um, knowledge that yeah there there are certain tools that you can utilize uh, maybe uh, these tools are something that we might utilize in our next projects you know uh, 
that uh, brings um, a good uh, rapport building between the devs and between the BA person, like something they can communicate about yeah. rather than the tickets. Right? Since since we are there, ChatGPT is breaking the internet right now. Like, what's, what's your take? How is that? How do you think ChatGPT or OpenAI technologies will... Uh, impact product development from a from a coding perspective. Um, I feel like it, it's not there to replace thing, but mm. to um, benefit or how we are like already processing. Mm-hmm. Like it just yeah. helps us. So mm. I look at from um, advantage point of view rather than replacing yeah. because. Some of um, like my clients, they say that, oh, now we have this. Can we just copy and paste all our code in chat GPT and get it, fix all the bugs, you know? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this, uh, this is like a thin line um, yeah. here as well. Though it does some work, though it does help in a little bit of coding, but it always needs like human effort to build a product, right? But it does help, like instead of... Uh, typing something in Google. Now you just do that there and get the exact information instead of browsing different blogs and websites. So I think it's just here to help us how we are already working and uh, with like different integration to open AI. um, If we feed them uh, the knowledge, then instead of us responding, like they can Mm -hmm. respond to it. So it's more um, effective way, I guess. Yeah. Rika, I'm curious as a developer, do you think do you think in the next few years at ChatGPT 6, 7, 8 comes in, will be a product owners, um, analysts, will they also be able to uh, contribute to the code base? Like, do you think it's going to be more of a, everybody is going to be an individual co- a contributor with people with more focus on understanding product strategy, product uh, roadmap, that from, but still like, the non-coders being able to contribute to code or what do you, what's your take? I don't think that, like, as I said, like there's, there won't be any kind of replacement, like uh, mm. the BA is doing the coding side, you know, that's, mm. still, that's something I don't even think about, but then mm. what it can help with, like the, if there's some issues, then the BAs can uh, understand what the issue is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, knowledge is power. And with project management, what I feel is um, some project managers uh, struggle because mm. they do not understand and they do not have knowledge about that stuff. And they might think like, are the devs exactly saying the correct thing or not? You know, it, there's lack of trust sometimes. Yeah. But then yes. once you have that knowledge, like once you know, um, yeah, this is something critical, then it just helps everyone in the team. So yeah, I guess like these kind of AI tools that does help in um, like upskilling yourself. Yeah. hundred percent. Just uh, it just helps in learning, right? Like, cause now mm. like they, they can learn database languages, SQL, having yeah. access to data. Um, yeah. And, and the fun and, part is like any technical terms you can understand uh, in like a layman's term as well, they use yeah. analogies. So that that's a fun part. That is something I use uh, Chat GPT for as well. Like if I have to explain to a non-technical person a really technical scenario, then I mm. just use those kind of analogies. Yeah, yeah. And then the and then the entry level BAs from masters product owners, they don't have to bother developers or be scared because now they can come prepared on what kind of question to yeah. ask with some foundational level of understanding. Um, yeah. So hundred percent. So I want to talk about uh, a little bit about agility. Um, so as a technology leader, um, how do you foster an environment of experimentation and learning in your teams? Yeah. With that, like saying agile, like it's been, I think, years and years that we have gotten to this agile framework and yeah. uh, things have changed. Like the number of uh, roles in a project have changed. Previously, it was developer doing the designing as well, doing the QA, doing the BA. And there, mm-hmm. then there was like product owner. But like over mm-hmm. the time, when things are more agile now, we have like several roles that like people wear like different hats. Um, especially 
in like my experience in the startup world, uh, sometimes like the tricky part is um, while we are delivering things, we sometimes miss out on experimentation and innovation because mm-hmm. we need to deliver fast. Um, so that's always a battle for someone in my role uh, who have to do something about it because uh, from a developer side, um, you know, they do not have enough space to think about these things. Mm. So it's really up to um, the leader of the project Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. implement innovation and experimentation and give um, enough space for everyone in the team to do so as well. So Mm -hmm. what I um, usually do is um, instead of, uh, saying that you know this is what we have to do uh, for mm-hmm. this functionality, I give them uh, questions like, "What do you suggest? Let's come mm-hmm. up with like different ideas. Maybe mm-hmm. spend another day just to think about that, because yeah. that will help us in really long term. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, we might miss out on some ideas. Like even uh, someone being a leader, they might not think about the things that are in the market, but Mm. then a developer who have like hands-on experience and who might have already done that in another project, they can, uh, you know, we can utilize their skill on that. So Mm. I guess um, it's about giving space Mm. to people in the team and taking the lead, like being a leader, taking the lead. Yeah, hundred percent. And Priyanka, one thing I wanted to, um, highlight the part of your story is you know you you were developers for just a few years and then you became a senior manager and uh, and a cto uh, of an organization right so um kind of give us your story give us your mindset on how you're able to accelerate so fast in your career yeah um so i guess being in a leadership position might not be um something that every developer wants mm. like uh, like few of my friends a uh, few of my near and dear ones who are into development they want to stick to development and not mm. go into management because they find it really stressful uh, you mm. know they might just uh, work on the tickets that's assigned to them rather than managing everyone and mm. to deliver the work so I think it's not for everyone but it's for someone who is um, really passionate about the outcome. Mm. So the thing that has motivated me um, when I did um, software engineering as well was the project, the outcome. Like I always thought beyond the tickets, I always had like what the user might be thinking mm. when they mm. use um, mm. the app or the website, right? So yeah. If you like um, have that mindset where um, you are like more focused on the product, then I guess this pathway comes really easy. For me, it came uh, really easy. When I worked as a software engineer, I was doing a bit of consulting as well because Mm -hmm. I always had that, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. consultation um, energy in my mind and heart. And that that helped me um, to... Um, bridge the gap between non-technical and technical people like Mm -hmm. um, when your stakeholders are not technical but then there's some issue that might take like another 15 days to resolve you know Mm -hmm. um, like there can be the situation where it's not it does it never goes as expected but then Mm -hmm. to uh, make them understand that's Mm -hmm. also like one skill to have and that is something that I I enjoyed doing and while I was um, um, working as software engineer, having that like consultation mindset as well, that helped. And mm-hmm. I got opportunities from startup to join as a CTO. So it wasn't like a really huge team that I had to look after. It was mm-hmm. more like um, my role um, as a CTO was to bring more devs in, like hire more developers and mm-hmm. um, like prepare a culture there yeah, in mm-hmm. the startup. So that's yeah. um, like the consultation background and having like product mindset that helped me to transition from software engineer to developer. Initially, it was like a bit of a struggle. Do I really want to manage people and um, yeah. manage, you know, all these uh, uh, deadlines yeah. and timelines of stress? But um, when you enjoy doing it, yeah, it doesn't feel like work as well. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, I'm curious what. Um, like what's 
what's what are you going to do like what are you what want you to do in your career what, what are you heading with um all the experience and the things that you've done so far um that's that's a tricky question like made me think about all these things i want in life yes but then i really want to um work with the startups uh, yeah. i enjoy doing that it's challenging but then mm. i enjoy those challenges and the success that we get after overcoming those um uh, for someone like um, me like i don't want to be in a corporate position having um like a fixed thing to do for your whole one week with the start of like there's always something different something new um yeah. and so much of a space for creativity so i think that's where i thrive so yeah. um, moving forward i want to um be part of like more startups and help them to yeah. um, bring their ideas to reality that's amazing um and bring up uh the other question that i have is like for um and now being a, a tech leader a cto what advice would you give to you the younger self who was just starting in tech like you when you were younger what advice would you give yeah yeah um yeah. to be more open mm. and seek more um experience from people who have mm. already gone through the path that i want to go into because yeah. uh what i think is um we sometimes do like we are on our own struggle and we want to go ahead but we do not uh, want to hear what others have already gone through like experience mm-hmm. sharing is also one way of moving ahead so i mm-hmm. think that is something that i would do instead of just being skeptical like if they would want to share or not mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know but uh, once you have someone you can look up to uh, it, mm-hmm. i i suggest to go ahead ask questions and understand their journey because from there mm-hmm. you can get so many lessons that you can utilize mm-hmm. in your journey and that would help you to um step ahead faster amazing amazing last question for you pranka what um what is the impact that you want to have um with the work that you're doing um the impact that i want to have is um one way or the giving back to the community so mm-hmm. why i like like startups is uh, i choose the startups that um give back to the community one way or another so mm-hmm. that is uh, something that i really uh, want to passionately do moving forward as well. yeah yeah amazing thank you thank you so much prinka i loved having this conversation uh and hearing your stories and lessons um yeah thank you so much thank you it's a pleasure to be here and to be able to share all these things all right that's a wrap with this episode thank you for listening till the end we hope these podcasts are providing value on your agile journey if you haven't visited our website theagilecoach.com we highly suggest you for other courses and supporting material on your journey you can also get access to our self-paced courses or learn more about the live training that we provide to become a scrum master product owner product manager with that we will see you on the next episode love and best wishes from the agile coach